The Mixology Tech drink recipes apps form a complementary suite, each focusing on a theme. Some draw together the best of contemporary mixology, others organize drink history. The recipe collection in each app is researched and curated by leading figures of today's cocktail renaissance, with particular attention to accuracy and provenance, placing these digital references amongst the highest ranks of reference books. I'm going to demonstrate the apps on this iPad, but they all work identically on the iPhone. Also in this demo, I'm using our free sync service and I encourage you to do so as well. I've shot a separate video on how to set that up. You'll see the effects of the sync service throughout this demo. I'll start in one of our most popular apps, PDT Cocktails, which is an official recipe archive for the famed New York City bar. On the left is the main menu. The core of the app is a database of recipes which you can browse much like an address book. Each recipe is listed alphabetically along with a brief summary and some other information. For example, these dots indicate whether the app believes I have the ingredients to make each of these recipes based on the ingredient inventory that I've entered. Tap any recipe to view it. You can navigate between recipes by choosing them from the list or by swiping up and down on the recipe itself to advance forward or backward through the list. Directly beneath the title of each recipe, some information may appear. In this case, the app is listing the ingredients that I seem to be missing in order to make this drink and calling out a substitution that I might have to make. The body of the recipe appears next, along with the citation and curatorial notes beneath that. If there's a photo, you can tap it for a larger view. You can tap any ingredient for more information. In this case, the ingredient is a proprietary blended scotch from Johnny Walker. A description and some other details are provided. If I have or acquire this ingredient, I can flip this switch to mark it as being in my inventory. In this case, I don't own this particular blended scotch, so I'll leave the switch off. If you're using our free sync service, the changes you make with that switch are automatically shared to this same app on your other iOS devices and across any other Mixology Tech apps you have on this and other devices. Here we can also see that this ingredient is specified in one recipe in this app, the one-two punch I got here from, and can potentially be used in 14 other recipes in this app. I can easily access those recipes by tapping here. These recipes don't necessarily call specifically for Johnny Walker Double Black, but I might be able to make any of these drinks using this scotch. The reason the database can make that claim is that it understands that Double Black is an example of blended scotch, which is a generic ingredient category. You can see the generic by tapping here. Once again, a description and some other details are provided, including a long list of other blended scotches on the market. Up here, several specific scotches are called out because they're specified in other recipes within this app. One, Famous Grouse, has a check mark beside it because I have previously marked it as being in my inventory. Note that Blended Scotch also has an inventory switch. I might want to flip that switch on if I know that I always have Blended Scotch on hand but I'm not particular about the brand. That raises an important point. How you think about and work with your ingredient inventory is actually quite personal. Some people are extremely particular about their brands. Others are extremely particular about some, but less so about others. And some people prefer to take a minimalist approach to managing their inventory and just focus on generics. In my case, although I do try to keep at least one blended scotch handy for making drinks, I'm going to leave this switch off and continue to manage my blended scotches on a case-by-case -case basis. That's a personal choice on my part you'll have to figure out what works for you. The essential detail is that the app is going to do the right thing in this situation and show that I could make this recipe, the one-two punch, using famous grouse that I have in my inventory. If we go back and look at the recipe, that's exactly what's going on here. Whether I think it's actually a good idea or not to make this drink with famous grouse, 
instead of double black is a matter of personal discretion. The app can't really make that decision for me or you, but it makes the option available. Some ingredients like lemon juice are purely generic. You either have them or you do not. In addition to proprietary and generic ingredients, you'll also sometimes encounter ingredient recipes. These are preparations you must make ahead of time in order to execute a particular drink. In this case, one-two punch requires a citrus oleosaccharum. Ingredient recipes also have inventory switches, so that if you batch some and keep it around, you can formally add it to your inventory if you so choose. The number of recipes in each app varies, but it's quite a bit of information to wade through. You can easily focus your exploration by using the filter feature. The filter box contains a long list of criteria with which to identify particular recipes. Right now we're just looking at drinks, and that comprises 400 of 469 recipes in this app. The other 69 recipes are not drinks, rather they are the ingredient recipes, preparations that go into drinks, such as that citrus oleosaccharum we were just looking at. You can add a filter criterion simply by tapping once on it. For example, if I tap recipes you can make, a checkbox appears beside it and it appears in the formula above and you can see the number of matching recipes has dropped from 400 of 469 to 107 of 469. These are the drinks in this app for which I have all the necessary ingredients based on my current inventory. If I scroll down to the ingredients section and tap on lemon juice, that criterion is also added to the formula, and I further narrowed my matches to 25. If I hit done, there they are, and I can see the formula I just created there at the top of the list. I can edit the formula further by tapping filter again. This time I'll tap lemon juice a second time. Notice how the checkbox has changed to the not symbol here and here. I'm now excluding lemon juice from the matches. So the matches will now include drinks I can make with my inventory that do not involve lemon juice. Apparently there are 82 of those. Let's narrow those results down further to drinks with grape brandy in them. Now grape brandy doesn't appear in this short list of recently used ingredients. So let's search for it. There, now we've found 10 drinks I can make that don't use lemon juice but do employ grape brandy. Here they are. Note that if you tap the clock button, you can recall any of these recent filter formulas just by choosing one. From the main menu, there are some additional ways you can find recipes. If you just want to call up a recipe or ingredient by name, you can use the search option. Also, each app provides some handy indices for drilling down into the database. In the PDT Cocktails app, you can find recipes by provenance, by type of drink, by other characteristics such as how they're made or how boozy they are or by their base ingredient. For example, these are the drinks that have an apple brandy base, and these are built on cachaça. There's more I can do with these recipes. At the top of each recipe are two buttons. The first pertains to your lists. You can add or remove a recipe from your favorites list, flag or unflag a recipe for further attention later on, or put a recipe on a custom list. For example, I want to try this recipe out soon, so I'm going to add this recipe to my flagged list. You'll see a little flag icon appears here and also over here in the directory listing. To view my list of flagged recipes, I return to the main menu and choose Flagged from the Lists and Journal section. There's the recipe that I just flagged. But because I'm using the sync service, my flagged list is shared across all my Mixology Tech recipe apps, 
so I'm also seeing my flagged recipes in all of them. If I only want to see my flagged recipes in this app, I can tap here. Of course, I can tap on any of these recipes to view them. If I choose one that is from another app, it'll pop me over to the other app and show the recipe. Here's the Beachcombers Gold in Beach Bum Berry's Total Tiki app. Note that some of the recipes in some of the apps are grouped under a little timeline so you can easily compare related recipes. The favorites list works just like the flag list, but it's intended to be a place to collect all the recipes that have become favorites of yours over time. Now, let's say I'm having some friends over on Friday and I want to choose some drinks I might serve. I could use a custom list for that. A favorite aperitif cocktail of mine is the bamboo cocktail, so I'll start with that over in Martin's Index. I'll choose Start a New List from the List Options and call it Friday Dinner Party. The recipe now shows that it's a member of my new custom list, and you can also see that list has appeared on the main menu. Because I'm using the sync service, my new custom list will appear in my other apps as well. Let's check my flagged recipes because I recall there's one I've been meaning to try that might be fun. The Bird's Eye View from Gaz Regan's 101 Best New Cocktails. Now I can add that recipe to my custom list by selecting the list by name. Another feature is the journal. You can annotate any recipe through the second button up at the top. There are three kinds of annotations, like, dislike, and a plain note. Like and dislike are similar to the concepts you might be familiar with from social media. For example, if I choose like, I have the opportunity to type a note about why I liked this drink. This is an optional step. And when I hit done, one like has been logged to my journal for this recipe. I can view the journal for this particular recipe by tapping the journal heading. If I need to, I can tap the ellipsis button beside each journal entry to edit the text of the entry, change the date, or delete it. If I go back to the main menu, I can access my full journal by choosing it from the lists and journal section. There's the like I just entered. Again, because I'm using the free sync service, my journal is shared across all my devices and all my apps. If I want to see only those journal entries from this app, I can tap here. As in the lists, you can tap any recipe to view it, and it will pop over to another app as necessary. Note that the likes and dislikes in your journal are cumulative, and will show up in the recipe directories. Ingredients are so important they get their own section on the main menu and they're organized so you can drill down into them in various ways. It's important to understand that while there are roughly 10,000 ingredients in use in mixed drinks, each Mixology Tech app is only concerned with those ingredients that are specified or implied in its recipes. That means you'll find significant overlap, but also significant differences in the ingredients listed in the different apps. These disparate sets of ingredients are ultimately unified through the sync service. If you add one ingredient to your inventory, that fact will be reflected in any other app that can use the ingredient, either explicitly or implicitly. One of the main reasons for visiting these ingredient lists within an app is if it suits you to tap the edit button and review the ingredients checking off the ones you've got in your inventory all in one go. Tip: If you really really want to systematically add all the stuff you've got, try logging into my.mixologytech.com from a web browser using your sync account credentials. There you can search our entire ingredients database and add almost anything to your inventory. Also, note the handy report on the main menu that calls out the ingredients you might want to consider purchasing 
in order to unlock more recipes you can make. Many of the features I have touched on in this brief overview run deeper than I've demonstrated. Their full potential should readily grow apparent as you begin working with them. Please don't overlook the materials in the appendices of each app. These add context and insight, and also don't overlook the features in the settings menu, particularly the units selector. All our recipes can be represented in imperial or metric units as you prefer. Thank you for your time. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask.